Hi there and welcome to episode 17 of Behind the Mask with the Hospitality Leader and I'm delighted to be joined by Emma McClarkin, CEO of British Beer and Pub Association. Emma, how are you? Uh, I'm good, I'm good. I'm finding deep resources with the, uh, to keep battling for the industry. Um, I'm really lucky that I'm genuinely passionate about beer and pubs and so are my team, so you get Amazing. 150%. Um, and thank you for the warm welcome to Abby as well, and uh, thank you for your time, I know you're a busy lady. So, okay, let's get straight into it. With the UK um, pubs and events picking up somewhat, uh, or quite a lot, um, and debates around the restrictions lifting on the 21st, um, what are your views in regards to the high customer demand and depleted workforce, and therefore the quality of the customer experience? Well, we've seen um, a great support from the Great British Pub Goer, uh, towards going out into industry again, which is fantastic, but we're still trading about only 80% uh, of our, uh, our prior year tra uh, uh, trading. So you know the, the reality is we're still down by 20%, mm -hmm. and the restrictions can't even allow 2,000 pubs to open in the UK. So we desperately need to see them removed and to get us not only back to try at trading at viable levels. Mm -hmm but also to get those pubs actually opened. Yeah. The problem that we have at the moment in time, Nick, is that the restrictions are so labor intensive. Yes. So I think that the customers are getting a good experience um, being served at the table. They quite like that these days, mm -hmm. you know, um, getting used to that continental style, but it is enormously labor intensive. So yeah. the staff that we have on retention are getting very, very tired very quickly, working with all the, the mitigations and the guidance that they have. So we have this constant battle between trying to get to viable trading, mm -hmm. but needing more staff and more labor intensive work patterns um, to, to serve uh, uh, less people. And that is the frustration that yeah, we yeah. have. So we really need to see the removal of those restrictions on the 21st. We've got our Countdown to Freedom campaign. Um, any delay to that is we're gonna be down 20% on normal trade. It will also be um, the Euros. And so half of that, we were hoping to really maximize the opportunity to open up again, mm -hmm. to welcome back in everybody at the bar, standing um, out without those restrictions. Of course, that's gonna be another revenue loss for us. You know, the bank holiday we just had, it cost us 80 million just by the restrictions that we had. that much? So, you know, this is the, every single day that we're operating under these restrictions is an extra pressure on businesses. Um, and, but it's, you know, it's putting in jeopardy the future of uh, the sector. Yeah, it's massive, massive strain. It's quite, um, uh, I think for the workforce, you know, the hours and the, the environment is, uh, you know, hats off to them. They're doing incredibly yeah. well. Um, but it's definitely a stress. I mean, we are um, arguably in the recovery. Um, I mean, what, Emma, what does the government need to, do, need to do to give businesses a fighting chance of a healthy survival um, in regards to um, duty on beer and rates? Well, listen, going forward, our recovery only starts when those restrictions are removed. Yes. So many people think your doors are open, you've had a reopening, everything's back to normal. It isn't. No. Day one is when the restrictions are removed, so we don't know yet when that will be. Um, from building on therein, mm -hmm. we are anticipating it could be a two to three year recovery period. Yeah. It's far longer than what the government are imagining mm. our recovery is going to take. Yeah. So we have had some support from the sector, which has been, uh, for, from the government, which has been fantastic in the business rates, but of course they're tapering off. Yep. We have the VAT discount, but that only applies to food. It doesn't touch on alcohol or drinks. No, so exactly. we'd really love to see an extension of that. And of course, making sure we get that business rates reform for the long term, because we're paying disproportionately. We pay five times more for business rates for the pub sector. It's disproportionate to our turnover. Wow. Yeah. And so we need to get fairness put back into that. Um, and of course, beer. Beer, we pay 11 times more than they do in Germany. We need to support our British brewers. Yes. They've had a terrible time. They haven't had the same levels of support mm -hmm. as our pubs. And yet, without beer, where, where would our pubs be? Well, exactly. Um, so, you know, we desperately need to secure their future. And so a lower beer duty mm -hmm. would absolutely uh, fire them on and give them the support they need as well for the long haul. The government know all of this. And what can we deliver for it? Because it's always one thing as a sector to go and say, we want this, we need this, we need that. But actually, what can we deliver? We deliver yeah. the jobs, jobs for young people specifically. Mm -hmm. We're 51% women in our trade. You know, we deliver jobs everywhere. Yeah. We've got pub in every town, village, city, hopefully for the future. Mm -hmm. So in every part of the United Kingdom, we can really help them deliver that levelling up agenda. And not only that, we're working towards sustainability, we're brewing green, and there are loads of things that we can do for them in return if they support us in our business model. 
Well, I mean, it has been the, the hardest time in the, uh, for this industry in our lifetime, you know, no question about that. Um, do you feel that this would be the making or the breaking, Emma, of the, uh, of the Great British Pub? Well, this is the most difficult question, uh, I think, Nick, because there is an awful lot of jeopardy out there mm. for many businesses. Um, even if they're open and their, their garden looks busy, it, it is at those reduced trading levels. Mm -hmm. they, they are not in a cash positive position and they won't be for, for quite some time. Sure. And so we can see, still see mass business failure. But I do have a long-term confidence in the sector because I know how the British public feel about the Great British Pub yeah, yeah, yeah. and our brewers, but we need the, the government now to buy into that because it's not only what we provide economically, it's also that social value that we yes. bring, bringing the community together, reconnecting communities mm -hmm. in safe environments um, and allowing people, you know, particularly with the mental health problems that we have and loneliness and isolation that this pandemic has caused as well. What we had before, pre-pandemic, mm. the pub can do that. We can provide that safe place for people to come, interact and reconnect. Um, so I, I think that we have a long-term future mm -hmm. if we can secure their recovery right now. So yes. the next 24 months are absolutely critical mm -hmm. towards uh, the future of the Great British Pub. Um, so let's, let's, let's pray and hope and, and strive for the, for the latter. I love your passion, by the way. It's, um, it's incredible. No, it's what we need. It's, um, uh, you know, it's, a, it's a fantastic industry. And I think that you know, the mental health and the sociability, mm -hmm. um, sort of two things go hand in hand, you know, yeah. people the freedom to, to live, really. Um, so um, uh, one voice I heard about, I mean, is there still a, it's still a strong collaboration? I can't get my words out. <laughs> is there still a strong collaboration between the industry bodies? It um, is, very much so. Um, it's great. We've worked so closely together, and I think more than we ever have in the past. Mm -hmm. And we recognise that to represent and get our voice heard as a sector, we needed to come together and it has been very helpful and it's been very powerful. And I hope that we'll keep that collaboration as we move forward Please because do, yeah. to, you know, that for, to support the industry throughout that period of recovery, it's gonna be a much longer than people think it is um, to pay down the losses from 2020 mm -hmm. and even half of this year. So, you know, it's worked incredibly well that we come together. Um, and we've got something very unique that we sell, you know, in our the Great British Beer and Pub sector. It's 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 really unique to the UK. It's what we love here at the BBPA. But we have so much in common that we fight for together. And a perfect example right now is on that shortage of jobs that we have. You know, shortage of staff. We have sorry many jobs, but not the right um, access to labour. Sure. But also the specific skill set particularly in our kitchens. And so we all identify that problem and work on it together because why? It hampers the success of the sector. Uh, and so that's what we're all committed to doing as trade associations. And I hope that we'll continue to keep doing that as we move forward. Well, you've got full support from us. I think it's um, it's, it's fantastic. And I, I spoke to Steve, spoke to Kate um, uh, as well. And, and I think you know what you guys are doing for the industry is sort of hats off because it's so crucial whether you're a, an operator or a supplier. Um, so all these campaigns, bring on the 21st, dare I say it. Um, and um, thank you so much for your time, I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you for what you do too. Amazing, thank you.